Anytime. So I'm going to talk about the theory of chance, if you will. Um, fate, the idea of embracing what you don't know which can shape what I believe great design work. So you'll notice if you're bored, this is what I listened to while I was making this presentation, actually fed this presentation. So <clears throat> feel free. So we, uh, from a Hollywoodization point of view, fate is sold to us as this, the meet cute, the, um, if you will, the uh, romantic comedy aspect of things. Two white people meeting and 90 minutes later realizing that they're fully in love. Um, but <clears throat> I like the idea of taking chance and kind of crushing it into boundaries. So uh, I'm going to talk about a few things. This is um, Lafayette Park, which is in Detroit. Um, this is a Mies van der Rohe construction. It's kind of an encampment, these two buildings. And then there's the incredible houses around it. Google it to have a look. Um, Megan Deal uh, was a student of a friend of mine. Um, she had come up with this idea, which I thought was actually stunning. Um, she had decided after, while she was studying at the Center for Creative Studies in Detroit, to create a project that kind of encompassed the idea of stripping back privacy. Um, and one of the things that I thought was quite brilliant was she actually created uh, this poster. It's basically eight feet by six feet. She stuck it up. She lived in one of those apartments. That's why I was showing those. Um, she stuck this up in the lobby and invited people to take um, unaccompanied tours of her apartment. So she actually invited people to go into her space without her there and let them basically spend time, five minutes each, closed the door behind them. They had five minutes to do whatever they wanted in her space. And then she created this book about the anxiety behind it, the idea of putting all of this kind of, you know, this privacy out there. Um, I kind of took, I like, I like this a lot, and this is actually a project. I teach at OCAD U, Ontario College of Art and Design. Sorry, I have to do that. Um, this is a project I set called um, It's Your Party and You'll Cry If You Want To. I teach expressive typography. I concentrate on typography specifically. So this is a type-based piece. But this, I ask the students to record 12 consecutive hours of their lives. Um, I don't know if you've ever done that, but it's amazing what you do when you start the clock and know 12 hours later you have to have recorded that. So this actually piece that was done by Colin, one of my students, uh, his life he felt was too boring, so he wrote a second life over the top. So this is so the blue is his first life. Um, this is a quite psychotic um, uh, student of mine. Uh, this is actually only one tenth of the final piece, but uh, this is actually just what was being the internal dialogue in his own mind for 12 hours, which as you can see, all intricately fits together nicely. Nicely set, nice grid. Um, Anthony, who was a student of mine, uh, he went to New York. He created a process for himself where for 12 hours he walked around Manhattan, put on an I, uh, iPod. Um, after the, every song, he stopped and took a photograph. And then what he did is he transcribed each photograph. So 130 photographs transcribed, uh, 57,000 words. Maggie had set, on, set her computer up to record conversation for 12 hours, so then she color-coded the whole thing. Um, to be completely narcissistic, that blue block in the top right corner is me. That was me teaching her. But again, you can kind of see these, these creations. So how does that fit into my, um, my work, or how, how, can you, how can you embrace that into your own work? Um, I find that chance is one of the real sort of concurrent things that happens when you only have 24 hours to achieve a final outcome. So this is basically the beginning of an identity I did for a landscape architect. I'm a graphic designer, by the way. I should have pointed that out. Um, basically what happened was over the course of 24 hours, it had just, I had two weeks to do it, as most of us are procrastinators. Um, so this is Francis in our office who basically told me to go away very quickly because I thought maybe we could collaborate together, but she didn't agree. Um, one of the things I find when you embrace chance is that you'll start to see these weird moments, these weird things that start to appear. So this was actually a student had sent this to me. This is Anna Garforth's work. She's an incredible um, landscape designer. This was a moss installation she did. So I sort of circle that because I want you to remember that sort of organic shape. My dog, I bring her into the office. Uh, Any time I need to think, 
I go, oh, I'm gonna walk the dog. So we take the dog out, I go get coffee. Um, so, and I talked to Libby. I talked to Libby on the way in today when I was talking about this, pro this uh, presentation. Um, as I was walking Libby that day, and this was all, I actually say 24 hours, this is actually probably more like 18 hours, I found this. Abandoned skate decks are the weirdest things. They are just everywhere. It's like playing cards. Have you ever heard the theory of finding playing cards? Just look down and you will find them everywhere. Anyway, I found this, and again, this kind of weird thing, this organic nature started to appear. I keep sketchbooks like crazy. I have one with me all the time. Um, this is mine, and this is my daughter drawing. I have a five-year-old who occasionally just sneaks my sketchbook away. Um, this was something that happened to come up as I was looking for space to write. Um, you see again this organic nature, this space, this kind of this curvature, these weird shapes. Uh, a conversation about typography, which I like to talk about a lot. Um, and the organic shapes within the G, within this typeface. And suddenly there's four times that this organic shape took place. So I started to think, well, maybe somebody's trying to tell me something over the course of 18 hours. Um, so I just started to draw that. I started to play with it. I started to shape that. And I started to realize that somebody was actually trying to tell me something. So when you start to embrace this idea of fate or chance and actually boundary it, uh, this is what comes out. This is the last slide, so thank you very much. But this is the identity that I presented to her. Uh, Kate Foxwhite is her, her name. Um, it wasn't chosen, but it made for a good slide. So thank you very much.